Hi there, here at the Single Malt Review we like to try a bit of everything, but there's not always a lot of rhyme and reason to what we try next, which means sometimes we sorely neglect entire regions or particular distillers. Let's try to rectify some of that. We're going back to Campbellton and, for the first time in a while, to Kilcarran. Mmm, Kilcarran indeed. Mm. Um, but not their usual output. This is the Kilcarran Heavily Peter. Yeah. So, um, something quite, quite different. It is a normal output. Punishingly high cask strength of what is it, 16.9? It is 16.9, so yeah. that has not budged too far oh. in its. Mm. Well, we will assume there's probably an average age of about six years old yeah. going on here. No age statement, but clearly a lot of young whiskey based mm. on that high strength. So it's strong for a Scotch whiskey. It is also heavily peated, which means it is going to probably do a number on one's taste buds. Yeah. You've it's, tried this before. I, I have not. tried this before, and mm. I, I really rate this one. I think this is a very, very good um, example of both whiskey and peated whiskey. Um, it's not heavily peated. I think it's referring to um, Kilcarran's style. It's not heavily peated compared to, say, Isla. Um, it's not. Uh, it's not about the peat and nothing but the peat. It's more of a, a bit more understated than that. Hmm. And um, they're calling it peat in progress, which implies to me that they're going to come out with a twelve-year-old version of this once hmm. it's sort of um, ready. I think Kilcarran itself is up to. It must be getting very close to its eighteenth anniversary now, so wow. we'll start to see some truly old Kilcarran soon, but they've had the 12 year old out for um, quite a wee while, which we did take a look at, um, mm. gave it quite a contentiously low score at the time, which mm. I, I stand by, I think that was that was the very first instance of Kilcarran 12, mm. and as I said at the time, um, once that uh, distillery had a couple of years more wiggle room, uh, the 12 year old would be vastly improved, mm. so really we should put our money where our mouths are and um, re-review re the 12 yeah, to Yeah, like have tried off camera have been uh, outstanding. Yeah, to form, it's, so. um, it's, it's a tidy wee distillery. Mm. Um, Kilcarran's a bit of a trap, that's just a, that's just a name. It's the Glen Guile Distillery, mm. which is a Springbank sort of a project, uh, something they people over there put together as uh, maybe not quite a sister distillery, but a, um, mm. a, a paired distillery. Now, Kilcarran's casks, do they favour a particular woods? I don't think they favour any particular style. Mm. I mean, just like everybody else, they'll use the majority of bourbon, mm. but there will certainly be some sherry in there. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if there's much of a sort of go-between from the cask stables mm. between Springbank and Kilcarran, but I'll bet, I'll bet they do use a few mm. ex-Springbank uh, ones. Mm. No filtering and no colouring at play here. Mm -hmm. It's quite a bright colour for something this strong, yeah. which again lends credence to the majority young whiskey angle we're in. And assuming. yeah, certainly no chill filtration mm. either. So it is a full, strongly bituminous peat. It's uh, like a road on a hot day mm -hmm. kind of a smell. But there's something that is remarkably absent considering oh. the strength. There's no burn on the nose. Yeah, that is exceedingly mild. All yeah. the way in and. Mm. You know, no for a snoot full of it No nasal damage whatsoever. It is one mm. of the most staggeringly gentle, yeah. sixty percent rocket fuel um, noses yes. I've ever smelled. It's it's really really strange, and the peat mm. is quite um, restrained as well. It's like I say, heavily peated for Kilcarran, maybe heavily peated for um, Springbank, but not heavily peated for Scotch whiskey. Mm. This is nowhere near. Um, say a Colilo or a mm. Lagavulin or anything like that. Now the peat is dominating everything else on the nose here, mm. but it's not uh, to the same extent as it would be if it was, as you say, an Isla whiskey. Yeah, but it's a it's a sort of a beautifully sweet. Mm. It is quite a sticky, tarry peat, which I guess puts it more in line. Reminds me a bit of oh, it's a wee bit between Colilo and a Bowmore, I mm. suppose, in terms of. It has some of that super, that really mineral peat that Bowmore has, and then the quite citrusy, quite oily peat that Colilo has. It sort of meets in the middle there. What it is not mm. like is Laphroaig. Mm. Uh, it doesn't have any of that iodine. Yeah, it's lacking maritime iodine or sea salt. Yeah. Um, and it's not really like Lagavulin. But Lagavulin mm. is so much a product of the wood, so much a product of its sherry maturation, mm. that it sort of kind of stands alone. But there, there's none of that particular um, note of richness in here. Well, whether it's a good idea or not, I'm going to try this at its full, very nearly 65% well, right. strength. The nose treats you fine. It's, yeah. Uh, what could go wrong? Whew. 
Whew. Yeah. Mm. Um, oh, that is that is that is zesty. That is vigorous. Mm. Yeah. Uh, a feat that it can't quite repeat. Yeah. On the palate, but uh, <clears throat> we're fine. We're good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A, 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 a gentle as it is on the nose. Um, I think the laws of physics state that if you put something over 60% alcohol in your mouth, it's going to have the same it. effect yeah. regardless. There's no such mm. thing as a gentle 60% whiskey, and it is not particularly gentle. Mm. Um, it's quite fiery, and it makes it very difficult to really catch what's going on. So I'm going to just put a wee drab of water That in said, while it's still a peat-forward whiskey, it is not just an overwhelming sense-destroying peat. There is still, you can taste it, you can appreciate it, and Feel it at that strength. More water, perhaps, and there we go. Okay, here we go. Now we're a bit more sensible. So, oh, yep. Now it's quite a bit more. It's, it's distinctly cool, Karen, and it's. I think they've done quite a good job in making Kill Karen's character really quite different from Spring Springbank. They haven't just cloned <clears throat> Springbank. Yeah. Um, which would be a weird thing to do anyway, I suppose, because Springbank is so atypical. It's so different to absolutely everything else. It's probably one of the most... I like to say I've got sort of four whiskies I can always guess, but um, Springbank is one of the one of the gimmies, mm. um, or at least I like to think so, because it's just so unique um, and so pickable. And Kilcarran is not really a great deal like it. Um, mm. It's... Certainly um, shares the similar Campbellton style, which makes it unique, sort of just um, in, in a de facto sense, because there are so few Campbellton distilleries, and that mm. sort of weird half smoked kind of a thing is desperately uncommon. But um, there's not much of a through line between the two distilleries. This is, it's a lot fruitier, mm. um, it's a lot more bourbon dominant, I think. And Adding water has done so much to this. With the addition of water, it kind of breaches the surface. Well, you've got that big peaty duck floating on the surface. Underneath, paddling away, there are uh, lemons, there's mangoes, and a lot of sour gummy yeah. caddy. It's it is really a, gotten the fruit going. Yeah. And you can taste that in abundance with the addition of a, in my case, fairly generous splash of water. Whereas that was utterly subsumed by the peat previously. It's made the nose super salty as well. Hmm. Um, I've heard it from um, someone who introduced me to this whiskey. Um, a, uh, a, a well, I suppose it's a few years ago now, but a fairly recent um, keeper hmm. here, keeper of the quake. Congratulations, oh. Stephen. Um, <laughs> and uh, he described this as salt and vinegar chips, which hmm. I think I get mostly on the nose. Um, not so much on the palate, especially not with water because it just ends up far too fruity. But on the nose, there really is a bit of sort of malt vinegar going mm. on. Like malt vinegar on some English style fish and chips right. is kind of where this where this takes me in a, in a nasal kind of a way. <laughs> and yeah, not, not repeated on the palate at all because yeah, the, the fruits are just too in charge. But it's... It is a very kind of a, it is a savoury mm. and a, yeah, kind of a salt and vinegary sort of a whiskey. That is a remarkable exercise, not only in peat and heavy peating, but also in just sheer transformation. The degree to which that has transmogrified, but not weakened or been diluted by adding water. Yeah. Um, I think once this is no longer peat in progress, once this mm. has a, 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 at least a 10 years slapped on the label, this is going to be really, really good. It's all really, really, really good. Um, and kind of a bargain mm. as well. Um, now that Kilcarran's, you know, a proper 12-year-old, it's still pretty jolly affordable whiskey, but, you know, it's, it's there, it's established, um, it's getting more popular, and ergo, the price is going to go and creep on mm. up. Um, but, and they've always been like this, their no-edge statement, work-in-progress stuff, has always been super cheap. Mm. It's sort of, it's almost like a like a beta release. Like they they want the feedback more than they want the money, kind of a thing. They've never never overcharged for their um, for their youthful mm. whiskey, which is remarkable. The more boutique stuff. Um, I mean, goodness, what you, what did you pay for Ardbeg's work in progress when they reopened Ardbeg? Mm. Um, that was astronomical. Mm. Um, what you could pay for unfinished whiskey. Mm. Uh, this is quite the opposite um, philosophy. 
a very very fair price for something that they are going to say is yeah a work in progress mm -hmm. it's not quite not quite there yet but you can taste what they're up to and sort of support them along the way and everybody everybody wins really yeah um, and over 60 percent you get more whiskey you do you whiskey get a hell of a lot of whiskey <laughs> yes. um, it's, it's almost whiskey mm. all the way down in that bottle it but. succeeds as a cask strength whiskey it succeeds as a heavily peated whiskey and as a campbellton whiskey it is just an all-round a powerhouse on all fronts yeah and uh, scores wise it ex succeeds at being mm. an 88 yeah. points whiskey for me what mm. do you think I'll go a little bit higher. This pushes into a 90 for me. Ooh. It is handling your pizza well. Heavily peated, but not comically peated. It has flavours and nuances to offer aside from that. And yeah, being this approachable at this punishing high strength means it's not just trying to be an exercise in excess. It's still a balanced and crafted whiskey, just one that delivers a lot of peat, a lot of alcohol, but you can get a lot out of both through the addition of a careful measure of water. Yeah, I think it's really tremendous and one I recommend to anybody who's interested mm. because it is so cheap. It is really cheap. Um, it's probably, might even be a good investment to stock up on it now because mm. once this sort of hits release, once this gets its um, age statement, be it 10 or 12 mm. or whatever they settle on. I oh, see, uh, this, is, this is batch number two. Yeah. Of the yes, yes it is. Yeah. I failed to mention that. Yep. They've... Yep. Um, I, this is fine print. Mm. Um, hearing, hearing from people who have tasted it, this is uh, similar, similar um, to the the first release, but presumably just mm. a wee bit, a wee bit older. Um, and the first one will be long, long gone now. And goodness, right. they might be up to three by the time you're watching this. So um, you just have to hope it still uh, maintains the quality. But presumably, it'll just get better and better until they settle on a on a release version, and then way you go, and way way goes the price as well. Mm. So that's why I say it's uh, yeah, might, might be a good one to stock up on now while it's still super super cheap. Yeah. So. Anyway, um, easy recommendation there from us at the Single Malt Review. Thank you for sticking around. We will be right back with something a wee bit different very, very shortly. So we will see you then. Slanjo, stick around.